What if this year could be your best year ever? Well, there's still plenty of time. And for many of us, it means starting simple and getting grounded in the right mindset to spark new actions and a fresh perspective going forward. Stick around and find out what you need to know next. It's been a challenging year for all of us, that's for sure. But with that comes an unprecedented opportunity to pivot, expand, and grow to new heights. You see, getting stuck in the unfortunate realities of a global pandemic with lockdowns, job losses, and the politics of it all is not going to move you forward. Better to recognize what's working in our favor and leverage that, such as more free time, to work on new projects, learn new skills, reconnect with friends, or start an online business, for example. So where to begin? Well, back on January 2nd of this year, my friend Sri Akarshna assembled a few of his brilliant creator friends at this amazing house in Beverly Hills, California, and we recorded an informal talk to a small group of students. And although it was a New Year's talk, the advice given is useful at any time, especially now when we might want to hit reset and need the inspiration. It's never been released before, and I want to share it with you. Listen carefully for some surprising predictions that actually happened. Let's go there now. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jay Menez, host of Hollywood Reel and your moderator for this evening. And joining me is a very special cast of individuals who are leading the way in the best of health, happiness, and success in the new year. Between them, or actually individually, they've all built social media followings numbering in the hundreds of thousands, which is a testament really to the incredible amount of impact they're having in the world. First of all, on my left here is life coach, therapist, author, and the creator of RTT Rapid Transformational Therapy, Miss Marissa Peer. Thank Hi. you. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and to her left is a man who's all about love, empowerment, and inspiration, Mr. Preston Smiles. <laughs> Next up is a woman who's a living testament to the power of manifesting with the law of attraction. And this is Omai Annie. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Welcome, Annie. Thanks. And then finally, we have the spiritual master who brought us all together this evening, Master Sri Akarshna. I need you to assist me here. If you hold this, namaste. <laughs> well, welcome to you all. Thank you. We are here in 2020, entering a brand new year, a new decade, really, full of uh, new possibilities, new opportunities, brand new opportunities. What I'd like to do is take that and offer our audiences a way to uh, leverage the collective wisdom in this room right now on how we can make it the best year, the best decade of their lives. Sound good? Sounds great. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. You heard them. All right, so we'll start with you, Marissa. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. So, Marissa, what is one thing that we can do right now to kick off the year right? I think people try to kick off the year trying to think, what am I going to change? I'm going to change my body. I'm going to change my relationship. And we're always trying to change out there. Forget about out there. Change in here. Just change the way you talk to yourself. Fall in love with yourself. There's nothing that will build your self-esteem on the planet than praising yourself, which we think is very arrogant. It's not very necessary. Look in the mirror and go, hey, there you are. I love you. You're warm. You're kind. You're funny. You've got something to offer the world. We spend so long trying to change, trying to make some guy or girl love us, some boss recognize our worth. We try to make people make us feel good about ourselves when really the person who can make you feel good about you is you. So just take a minute and think of what do I most need to hear? I want my boss to say you're amazing. I want my partner to go, you're amazing. If you say it, you're amazing. Your mind doesn't go, oh, you said that. Your mind goes, well, if you said it, it must be true. Maybe the boss has an agenda. 
So wherever you, the missing bit, the words you don't get to hear enough that you're trying to make someone else say, say them to yourself. They will sink in like lotion on dry skin and they will nourish you. So nourish yourself with words. Don't try to make other people believe in you. Do it yourself. It's immensely empowering and it will last forever. Incredible. Thank you. And uh, avoid negative self-talk, right? Oh, that's the worst. You know, crit criticism diminishes you and praise elevates you. We're all told, oh, if it, you're, you praise yourself, you're big-headed. No, you're not. Praise will elevate you. Self-praise will build your self-esteem. In fact, when you praise yourself, it has more of an effect than when someone else does it because someone else has an agenda. I could go, well, you're so great. Now could you drive me home? I can't get an Uber. Or could you fix something. So we know people have an agenda when they use praise, but we also know that whatever we to say to ourselves, it must be true, which is why self-criticism is worse. When someone else is mean, you can go having a bad day. When you say it, it just goes in. So a great resolution to praise yourself more and more and more. Criticize yourself less and less and less, but also don't let in other people's criticism and do let him praise. Don't go, oh, don't mention it. When people say, um, you did a great job, and go, oh, it's nothing. Let praise in, expand into more praise because then you're expanding into more self-esteem. Never go, oh, don't mention it, it was nothing. We say, thanks, yeah, great. And when someone says something great, don't go, you too, because now you're just giving it back too fast. So I could go, oh, I love your jeans, you go, I love your shoes, but now you're not giving yourself time to accept it. You'll learn to be really good at letting praise in because it will build you like nothing else. What is the better way to respond to that? Thank you. Just simply thank you. Yes, if someone says, I love your book, don't go, oh, didn't you notice the third chapter was awful? Or I loved your talk. Yeah, but did you notice I missed the best bit? No. People point out all their faults. Don't ever do that. Just say thanks. Thank you so much. I feel great. Thanks. Hmm. That's that's wonderful advice. Yeah. Every word is a prayer, right? Every word. And if you want, you can't expand and contract at the same time. So when people are praising you and you're going, oh, it's nothing, or oh, yeah, I got this from Target, it's 10 years old, or oh, actually, it wasn't really a great speech at all, you're, you're now contracting when you're Every praise gives you a chance to expand. So when you get praise, first of all, say thanks, and then agree with it. Oh, you liked my book? I loved it too. It was a great book. I had such fun writing it. Or when they go, I love you. She's go, I love my shoes. I've got two pairs. Aren't they great? If you can agree with it. Or people say, you know, I, I heard you're the best salesperson in your office. Don't go, well, the best one was on holiday. Go, yeah, I really am, and I'm loving it, and it feels so good. So even better than saying thanks is to agree with the praise. Magnify the praise. Be about expansion. So agree with it and add to it. It's not arrogance. It's honoring yourself. And then you'll get very good also at praising other people because that's how you build their self-esteem. Even the teller in the store go, I love your nails or your perfume is so nice. You did such a good job today or thank you so much. Try and build other people's self-esteem because that will also, as you build theirs, you're also building your own. Give a lot of praise to everyone, but put yourself at the top of the list. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. All right, Mr. Preston Smiles. This man is known for taking big concepts and breaking them down into small, actionable steps. So I know he's got something to say on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Preston. All right. I, know, I got so it. one I got thing. It. Yeah. Got so it. I'll do this in two parts. So one of the things that I've been, um, I'd say, really successful at that I think is a good idea for people to adopt is scheduling in play. I, I think that there's something important about remembering that we're just all big ass kids. You know, there's a part of us and we, it's very easy to get like serious about everything. And you know, the reality is, is like, and I'm, in, I'm gonna sort of go about this in a funny way, but I, in 2019, bought myself a Tesla. And for so long, I, I was like hoarding money and blocking the flow, even though a lot of it was coming in. 
uh, the flow was staying going because I was I was also gifting and and being really of service to humanity. But when it came to like like that level of giving back to myself, I wasn't allowing it, and and so I recognized it and decided that I was going to go way to the other side. And I bought this hundred thousand dollar car, and one of the first things I did when I talked about it was I I likened it to the Ninja Turtle that I had when I was thirteen. I, all of it is trash. It'll, it'll belong to someone else or it'll be in the ground or whatever. And, and so reminding all of us not to take this stuff so serious. Like I'm dope and I'm awesome, no matter if you know my name or not. I'm a blessing to this planet. And each and every one of us is as well. And, and I think that that's, if you can just let go of the seriousness, so many things happen from that play. And um, the second piece that I want to add into this is, and I spoke about this earlier, elevation requires separation. I think that a lot of us want certain lives, and yet we aren't willing to let go of certain ways of thinking and being and the type of people that we're um, spending time with including mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and boyfriends and girlfriends. It's very important that we guard our, our, our sanctuary and fill it with people and um, things that help us grow. And I'm not saying that somebody who challenges you doesn't help you grow. They actually do. What I'm talking about is, you know, there's seasons in life. And, and when we can you know, get that, oh, this is summer. And, and in summer, this is how I'm supposed to roll. And if, if somebody's in their dark night of the soul in their winter moment, and they keep coming in and raining on your summer, then you get to make the decision, the choice to separate yourself for now, right? I did the same thing with my family. I did it with my friends. My friends and I were all operating around the same space. And I told them, and this was probably... 2007. Those are boundaries we're talking about. Yes. I said, I'll be back. But for now, I'm out. I'll be back. I'll love you forever. But for now, I'm out. And, and me setting that boundary and me getting that, literally, within a few years, I, I had created something that I don't think would have been possible if I stayed in the same environment. So mm. That's what I got. That's great. Yeah, protect yourself. Yep. First, and play. So you can take care of a lot and play. play. Yes. Yes. Hell yeah. All right. Annie? Beautiful. What you got, Annie? We'll see. <laughs> um, she wants to know too. <laughs> um, yeah. We'll see what yeah. comes out. Let's manifest it. Yes. Um, well, so far, what everyone has said, I completely agree with. Hmm. Marissa, I, I, as soon as you said that, I was like, dang it, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> like, change the way you talk to yourself and be nice and love yourself, all of that stuff. But one big thing for me that I've really learned over the last year or so is get comfortable and know that whatever you're feeling is okay and you're safe. Yeah. Like right now, being surrounded by these people, I can notice the sensations in my body. I have a bit of that old like anxiety that pops up, that like tingling, and it's okay. I can still speak. I don't have to sit here and shake and not say anything like yeah. I may have done in the past, but it's okay to experience what your body is experiencing and do it anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. Like feel the fear, which I'm feeling. I feel like tingles in my arms yep. and in my core. And it's okay, I'm not gonna die, I'm okay. Feel the fear, do it anyway. And if it's something that you really, really want to do, but it terrifies you, then definitely do it. Like yes. definitely do it. I was saying earlier, I got on a stage in front of 1500 women for the first time this year. I, for like a whole month, you know, I was letting those emotions pop up and I was like, ah, what if I freeze all of these, you know, lies that pop up into your head? Um, and I felt that way and I felt terrified for a whole month. And I'm like, in the past, I would have self-sabotaged and I wouldn't have gone out there and I would have come up with excuses and like, oh no, I'm sick, whatever. But I'm like, no, you get to change that story. I'm going to go on that stage. And I cried before going on that stage. And I'm so happy I cried. That's another tip. Cry. If you feel like you have to cry, <laughs> cry, release that emotion, let that energy out. Because I feel like because I cried before I went on stage mm -hmm. and released, mm -hmm. I went on stage 
with zero nerves, yes. like zero nerves, 1500 people. That was a scary thing. My, that was one of my stories. Like I can't public speak mm -hmm. because I'm terrified. I have social anxiety. I have, yeah. And also stop identifying with that stuff. You don't have, you are not anxious. You're experiencing anxiety. I'm experiencing these sensations. It's not what I am. It's not who I am. So yeah, just, you know, go full force. Lean into the fear and do what you want anyway. Get it, girl. <laughs> tell yourself you're excited because your mind cannot tell that it's fear and excitement are exactly the same. Yeah. So you might as well say, I'm so excited, I'm feeling because your mind doesn't know. So going on stage, always go, that feeling? It's excitement. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm really turned on. I can't wait to do it. Your mind doesn't know. So everything you're saying is great, but don't say I'm terrified. Say I'm super I am excited, though. And after that experience, I'm like, yeah. I want to do more of that. Yeah. I love it. Lean into the fear. Yeah. It's Brilliant. not fear. It's excitement. It excitement. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Annie. All right. Master. I think these guys said it all. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, agreeing with everybody, coming from a slightly different perspective of understanding, 2020 is a very big year. If we talk about things on a different level, whether we talked about the way the stars are aligning, um, the way numerology happens, when you get the twos and the twos, and then also combining, getting the fours also. Actually, this is the time for change. And it's the time for everyone for change. So kind of resonating with what everybody on the panel is saying, this is actually the time for everybody to let go of what no longer serves them, to move on, to detach from things that, that no longer serve them, to pick up that courage, to be able to align yourself, say yes to opportunities, to be able to quiet that mind, keep that mind calm. Don't be distracted. There's too many distractions today. One swipe on Facebook, our mind is consumed. So without being so distracted, have some time for yourself. Get deep inside the core of what really drives you, where your passion is, and then whatever actions. and and because change is always uncomfortable because it's something we've never done before or something like getting on stage if we've never done it before. So it's going to be uncomfortable. But what I say is come to the acceptance of the pursuit of getting out of the uncomfortable for that success, for that change. Mm. And so I think people need to come to acceptance and say, it's uncomfortable, it's challenging me. That's good because I'm growing from it. So it's very important to take action uh, for this year going forward. And we need to get clear about what our goals are. Reevaluate, as you say. I think people get distracted when they talk about goals because what will happen is there will be different influences because different people, they'll say, hey, why don't you do this? Hey, why don't you do that? Then somebody will say, why don't you do this? And suddenly you want to do everything. You want, I want to be a Forex trader. I want to, I want to be a speaker. I want to be a YouTuber because everything sounds so great. And that's why I said, instead of, being distracted and setting goals because when we're setting goals like that there's chaos stage happening and we're just blasting these goals out and suddenly we'll find by by no time we'll reach that goal and we'll say i don't like this so instead of that how about we quiet in the mind first we dig deep work on self dig, spend time with yourself find out what really truly drives you what's your why behind it and then take action towards that thing yeah that's great advice <laughs> well, speaking of goals, let's talk about New Year's resolutions. Uh, and we'll open this up to whoever wants to respond first. New Year's resolutions, hot or not, uh, how do we do them or what's the alternative? First of all, my thought in New Year's resolution is that why is it wait for that New Year's? Because when it doesn't happen, they'll say, okay, maybe I'll do it next year instead. It's just like when they say, I'll do it on Monday. So Personally, I'm not a big fan of New Year's resolutions, but it's a good excuse for some people to say, okay, this is the time to set some goals. But at the same time, people are lacking accountability. So I think no matter whatever New Year's resolution you're setting, make sure to have, uh, and I always say these two things, I think a coach is important for all. Everybody needs a coach. And the second thing is environment because we get affected by our environment. Mm. So I think these two things are, yeah. Right. And that was to Preston's point, uh, be, be aware of who, you're, who the people are around you and it may be time to step away. Yeah. You got something? Yeah. Um, I think 
the best resolution you can ever make is to like yourself. Again, stop trying to change out there, change in here, change the way you think about yourself, change the way you talk about yourself, change your language. If you, your words shape your reality, you don't like your reality, change your words. And then another great resolution is to make what is unfamiliar familiar. If confidence is unfamiliar, make it familiar. You you know, the mind likes what is familiar, but you get to choose what's familiar. So you've got to make good stuff familiar, believing in yourself, applying yourself, liking yourself, talking to yourself the way you talk to your very best friend, being your own very best friend, make that familiar. And the stuff you don't like, the procrastinating, make that unfamiliar. And, you know, there's hundreds of New Year's. There's Chinese New Year, Jewish New Year. All year you can have someone else's New Year. There isn't just one New Year. You can have a New Year anytime you like. But New Year, new attitude, you are what you believe. Mm. You make your beliefs, and then your beliefs make you. So you might as well make your beliefs amazing because you have a choice. If you make your beliefs and then your beliefs make you, if you make your beliefs amazing... That can only make you amazing. So make great beliefs familiar and make negative self-talk unfamiliar. And people say, but how do I do that? Well, you start to say, okay, I'm making self-belief familiar. Never add if it kills me. I'm making this familiar. How do I I say it? I do it. I apply it. And then after a while, it stops being what you do, becomes who you are. And then your life is really extraordinary and amazing. Can I piggyback that? Mm Because I think there's something really important. So, um, hmm. I th- something that has helped myself and thousands of clients that I've worked with um, directly and indirectly is reminding ourselves that there are maybe close to a million of course living in our body. And I'll say that a little different. So just speaking to what she's saying, there's making the unfamiliar familiar. And there's all this fear that comes up with the unfamiliar, the unknown. And how I uh, beat that and hack that is I begin to look at all the other places in my life where there, it's just an of course. Most of us walk in our house and we instantly know where the light is because we've done it so many times. There are things, and I say this to my coaching clients all the time, there are things that if I went to work with you would be easily of courses for you. Of course you do this. Of course you move there. Of course. And for me, they would be unfamiliar. But you're in my pond and I'm a shark and you're a guppy in this moment. But there's so many thousands, millions of places where we all are um, living the dream. And I think that it's important for us to recognize that because as humans, we can get really caught up in what's next and, and, and like reaching for these things that are over there. And that is actually beautiful, right? Like desire comes with the, with the car. It comes with the human. Nobody gets out of desire. However, where we source that desire and how um, attached we are to it makes a big difference between like, you know, the, the byproduct of happiness and like, Uh, that being like a thing that comes every few months or that being a thing that is constantly here. And for me, and I learned a lot from my son, the allowing myself going back to that play and that curiosity to, to like dive into the, to the curiosity of what's going to happen now while knowing that I didn't die last time. I'm still here. That is amazing. And that produces power and confidence. Um, I coach coaches and one of the models that we use all the time is progress over perfection because every bit of progress that we have produces more perfection and perfection is relative and subjective based on what you say it is. And so that's the game. And I know I'm kind of going all over the place, but like, does that make sense? Did I just make sense? (laughs) Did I make sense? Yeah, I did. Okay. (laughs) That's what I got. (laughs) I'm going to piggyback you. Do it. Let's go. Let's go. 
the great thing about your mind is that you have no idea what your potential is because as you move towards your potential, it expands. It expands again. Um, Mark Spitz, who was Robocop in the Olympics, now you cannot even get in the team swimming at the speed he swam when he won nine Olympic medals. Now it's not even good enough. So as you move towards your potential, it expands and it expands. You yes. have no clue what you're capable of. But here's something you do know. Maybe you don't, but it's great. You know, when the mind moves through your dimension, it never, ever, ever goes back again. Mm. So just keep going forwards. Don't worry about if you can do it. You know, you couldn't pee in the toilet once, but now you can. And nobody ever worries about that. Maybe when they're 102, you might reverse that. But Or when you're drunk. Yeah, something else that wasn't familiar. You couldn't get a banana in your mouth when you were your kid's age. Yes. But it becomes familiar. Yes. And if you make something, if you make good stuff familiar and negative stuff unfamiliar, when your mind goes to that new dimension, it cannot, will not, does not ever go back. In fact, it keeps going forwards to more potential. You have no idea what you're capable of. If you went back 100 years, you'd be king of the world because of the stuff you know. So just keep going into expansion. Don't worry about where you're going. Just know as you go forwards, you can't go backwards. It's not even possible, and that's a great thing. That's my thing for me. Thank you. Am I expected to say something on this subject? <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> Resolution. It was about, <laughs> you can't just agree. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. But also, as far as New Year's resolutions go, I don't, what I do, I don't call them New Year's resolutions. I am a huge vision board fan, though. Mm. Like, I do like to get the visual of what I want and, like, really dig down and, and f like, you know, put my vision out there and, and set that intention. And I've only been making vision boards for the last three years. And so much of what I put on those, mm -hmm. they actually manifest into my life. Like, so many things. My life is completely different compared to a few years back. And so, yeah, call it a New Year's resolution, whatever you want to call it. You get to create whatever life you want and you don't have to put too much thought into it as far as like, is this good? Is this bad? Huh. Like we make meaning out of things. It doesn't have to be this big, complicated thing. So set your intention, know what you want, let it unfold, like surrender, it's all good. It gets to be easy. And that's that's coming from somebody who's 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 done that over and over and again. Yes, to, and, I'm a and been able to manifest her <laughs> dream life. Can we dive deep into this now? Yes. Like on a different road. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> because we're talking about vision and vision boards, or even thoughts, or even fear, or unfamiliarity. I want people to actually just grasp this concept a second. Nothing I'm saying is non-tangible in this sense. It's all science. Energy is everything. Everything is energy. What is thought? Energy. What is idea? Energy. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred. What is idea? It can't be created. Mind cannot create. It is already there. So if it's already there, then actually what you can think mm -hmm. for an idea, meaning it's already in existence, which is a hard concept for some people to grasp because it's like, well, what would you mean? There's this imagination. But you can't imagine something that's not there. And then comes the whole question then of, but wait there a second, you're talking about you think, but it's already there. So how does that work in the timeline? But it's only because we understand time as linear. Mm -hmm. That becomes the problem. So when it comes to these big thoughts or these big dreams, actually, it's not a dream. It's the same channel from the collective consciousness. We are purely the vessel. It's come out. Now it fears us. Uh, it, the fear kicks in. And only because now it's from channel through us battling with mind, which has been conditioned. Nobody's mind is themselves. You can only have your belief based on what you've learned or what other people have set for you to believe or what you've seen or your experiences in the past. So actually, we're battling with two things here. One is what we can call collective consciousness or we can call um, it, uh, intuition. And that is always battling with thought, mind, fear, doubt. Thought and mind is not self. 
the other thing is far greater than what we can explain can be called our higher self, God, universe, whatever you want to call our creator. And so actually there is no fear at all. When we think it, we know it's already there. Go for it. Hmm. All right, I, can, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be heaven's advocate. So, and I'm just because you know you and I can go back and forth for hours on this. And there was something you said as well that was like, no, I don't know if I believe that, but I think it's awesome, right? That's why we're all amazing. Sure. Yeah, and I love like the, the thing. So let's go into, um, so fear, right? You said there is no fear, which. Um, so you're saying you have no fear? No, fear is that fear is from life. Got it. Oh, but you said mind is separate from self. Mind is separate from channel. Mm. That mind. Yes. Intuition. We got two things. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> because, and, and I think we would agree on this, there's no way to be separate from God. There is no aspect or corner or anything we can turn that has a separate from source and so all that is here every bit of it and and this goes back to the thing that you said that i think i would agree but like it for these purposes like i don't believe in negativity right and i, th I think that there are these sort of schools of thought and this is not you i'm going into like the instagram world where it's like um toxic people and toxic, toxic, toxic. And I think that is absolutely bullshit because there are only, there are toxic thoughts that could not serve. But what happens when those thoughts lead to the dark night of the soul, which then leads to the reawakening, which then leads to leading thousands of people back to their hearts. So was it ever toxic? Was it ever negative? Or was it isness expressing itself perfectly because that is what it's all about and going back to another thing you said right and I, this is us agreeing again so i teach that it's not about becoming it's about revealing and so this whole game is about revealing what's already here we are all geniuses everybody came with a divine beautiful blueprint that only we can express in this particular lifetime and the juiciness and the magic about it is the process of being in it. And what I've noticed in my 40 years of being on this planet is that it never stops. There is no moment where we're not revealing, where we're not, um, you know, and, and not that we, we pay attention to numbers and age and all of that stuff, but there is something beautiful about it. And speaking to your husband and hearing you talk, I'm like, yes, I can't wait. I can wait, but I also can't wait because <laughs> I think I'm freaking awesome right now. And, and, and like, you know, age, I am an animal as well. And so age comes with the animal mm -hmm. and I'm like, yo, she's, a, she's amazing. And so what is, what is the version of Preston going to be like that's still revealing, right? And, and the, the idea of teaching an old dog new tricks, I think that every dog can learn new tricks and, and I'm seeing it unfold. People say all the time, you're 40? How are you 40? I am. I'm, I'm everything. And that everything gets expressed in 20 billion different ways. When I was 25, and this is the last thing I'll say, when I was 25, even 35, I was like, yo, like 40, ooh, that's old. And the older I get, the wiser I get, the more I, I catch that like, my sex is better. My <laughs> my brain is my like everything is better. It's just getting better. Is this true or not true? Yeah, because you're not aging. You're saging. Oh, get him! Let's go. All right, passing the mic. Let's go. <laughs> the age is a number. You know, you it's like for everyone. You're not your weight. You're not the numbers on the scales or in your mm. bank account. Well, you're certainly not the numbers on your birth certificate. You have three ages, your chronological age, your biological age, and mm. your psychological age. Mm. And the age you feel affects the age. So people who are young at heart and have great sex and laugh and giggle age very different to people who are very serious. So you don't have to defy aging. You can just ignore it. It's just a number. You could live until you're 102. 
you know, why we get so affected about how much do I weigh? What size am I? Yes. How much money is? What are the numbers in my bank account on the scales in the label of my blouse? And on my birth certificate, who cares? If you didn't know how old you were, you could be whatever age you wanted. So act like you've got no birth certificate, no scales. It doesn't matter. What matters is what you think. You know, mm. I, I never think about age because it doesn't matter. Mm. I plan to live until I'm a hundred and something and more. And so, and of course, every three years, our life expectancy goes up by a year. You know, and, and what you, I mean, Bridget Bardo had to retire at 35 because she was middle-aged. But now we look at Sharon Stone and Jane Fonda, who's still attractive and sexy at 80 because there are no limits. The glass ceiling is in your mind. Mm. The limits are in your mind. If you don't pay any attention to aging or a bit of body tissue or your childhood, if you don't pay attention, nobody else will. It just doesn't matter. Mm. We make it matter. We make the wrong stuff matter. So get a mood board and, and do what you want, but also get an accountability group because if you have a group and you commit to them, your chance of succeeding goes up by a whopping 80%. So get a mood board and commit to, I mean, I have one. I, everything I've on my, on my board came true, everything, even doing a hot air balloon over the Serengeti. I put it on there. I put everything on there. And it all came true because you're not putting it on there. You're putting it out there. Mm. You're saying to the world, "This I, I deserve this and I require this. And I don't say I want, I go, I require. Mm. What I require of myself, what I require of my life, what yes. I insist on. Like I say to my body, I insist on wellness. You are a wellness producing machine, which is something going, well, I don't want to get sick. I don't want to get ill. I hope I don't get the flu. I never want to get a cold. You say to your body, I require wellness. I insist on wellness. I require love and health and joy. Mm -hmm. But it's like it's like people talk about cosmic ordering, but it's all the same thing. Focus on what you require. Decide you're absolutely worth it. That's super important. You know, people go, well, I want to find love, but I'm not really good enough. I've got an idea, but it's not. You have to believe you're worth it. The most successful advert in the whole world is L'Oreal, I'm worth it. We all spend more on shampoo because Jennifer Anderson said, I'm worth it. But, you know, you are worth it. You're worth everything and more. So first believe you're worth it and then request it. Make a mood board, have an accountability group, tell them what you're going to do. And then you have to go back and do it, and it will move you forwards like an arrow. It will move you forwards like a laser and, and keep moving forwards. There is no backwards. Life can't go backwards. It can only go forwards, and you can go forwards, and, and life gets better every year if you believe it. That's great advice. Yeah. Yes, yes. Aging is saging. Aging is saging. That's a drop-the-mic moment right yeah. there. Don't drop it, though. <laughs> Aging is saging. Age only matters. If you're wine. Yeah. And you're enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Master uh, Akarshna, what should we be paying attention to more this year? Oh, you want to reveal those secrets. <laughs> <laughs> can I, can I, I'll, I'll riff this, I'll flow this. It's easier Please. Then I don't need to think. Okay. So, um, First of all, there's a lot of things that are happening in this world right now. And that's why you'll see a lot of fights happening between, let's say, US and China, the big superpowers out there. And even in Hong Kong, like hell is breaking out and all these war and everything is breaking out. Actually, this is in uh, yogic terms, what sometimes we will call the dark age. And what we mean by the dark age is there's things happening for, and this again is not separate to what Preston was speaking about before, because everything is a God, because everything is one in the same sense that we can have parts of our molecule and blood cells that fight each other creating antibodies and you see them fighting but they're fighting for function for existence to happen they can be no positive without negative so in that sense it's not a bad thing but what's going to happen in the next few years actually one will be economic crisis will happen and then following eco economic crisis will actually follow another world crisis and when i talk about that i'm talking about things like natural disasters and everything like that this is nice now sensitive material because it's like what is allowed to be said or not to be said but a lot of people will actually take this with like a, um, a, a pinch of grain of salt or something because they won't even believe it anyway so it's fine but the smart people right now needs to save up capital, save up cash. 
because when that recession hits, it's going to be the people who are smart who go in at that time to accumulate. They will be able to take all. And by the way, while you take all, yes, there will be other things happening at the same time because there'll be people suicidal and everything will happen, happen at the same time. But everything is for existence. And so when we sweep, the smart people sweep at that time, then actually that wealth will last a lifetime. But it's the wealth is not for us. And the superheroes will know that. It's because what, what can we do? We can't drive five cars. We can't, we can't have how many watches and how many houses. But, at the, but what we understand is that wealth is actually to protect and actually to bring the next wave of positivity up because there's going to be a lot of people in need. There's going to be a lot of people who need our help at that time. And those who play the next few years wisely, actually, they will be the heroes. And so why is that happening? Life is ups and downs. There's no other way to look at it. So it's funny because a lot of people, they say, let's change the world to make the world all positive. Actually, it sounds beautiful, but not possible. That's reality. If everything was positive, that's end of existence. We know when we see a diagram like this flat line, what does that mean? It means dead. Everything travels in vibrations. Life cycles, everything, wealth, everything travels in life cycles. So actually, this down that's happening, next will be up, next will be down, next will be up. So actually, our whole aim right now is not to say, hey, let's fight the, just like what Preston was saying before. We're not fighting that negativity in that way, not to kill it off. If we kill it off, actually existence will finish. But what we are doing, we're only raising, like what Marissa was saying before, raising the whole collective consciousness. Yeah, because at the same time, while positive is rising, trust me one thing, negative is rising too. We only see, oh, everyone's, everyone's sharing love right now. You know, the world's becoming more conscious. Not true. The positive people, your world is becoming more positive and you're seeing love everywhere. The negative people, let me tell you something, they're finding more weapons to kill people and they're finding new ways to attack people. They're also raising their game also. But this is purely just both games are to rise for existence. And that is evolution. That's, that's a unique perspective. Uh, and, and I know Preston has something to say on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just play heaven's advocate once again. The, the idea of negative people I do not subscribe to. And... It, it it goes back to oh, what is this book? Think not think and grow. Um, hmm. it has left me, but I'll use another example. In conversations with God, when He says that Hitler went to heaven, right, and 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 then what that means, and and He speaks about how um, nobody is all bad or all good. We just are. And we make choices. And Hitler was a um, outward manifestation of the collective consciousness at that point. And so, you know, I live by speak what you seek until you see what you said. And the back in the day, there was the Gandhis, Martin Luther Kings, Malcolm X, people just popping out of anywhere. Now, this so 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 going back to like the internet right the global mind and now what the global mind has produced is the global heart and and where there's so many of us that you can't just shoot and kill one because there's so many popping up and to me this is an indicator of what the world is doing what the collective consciousness is doing when yesterday i see a commercial from burger king that says we have um, um, plant-based burgers that you will can't tell the difference between the meat and the and the this thing. This is telling me one, two things: one, the consumer is getting smarter; two, those who own Burger King and all these other things are acquiescing to the consumer. So the consumer is figuring out: ah, you're playing me. Ah, okay, you're telling me I need that makeup because you want me to feel ugly all the time. So I'll keep buying. And so what's happening is with this hashtag body positivity and people like Lizzo and all of these things, these, these sort of juggernauts coming out of nowhere is to me, collectively, 
we are, and I agree with she, what she said about um, my friend here, Annie. There we go. <laughs> nailed it. Um, that, you know, if we went 100 years back, you would be Jesus to everyone. Legit. And so, but like there's, there's so many of us now that it seems regular. That's awesome. And so I, I feel you on the recession thing and the ups and the downs and the lefts and the rights and the ins and the outs because it's all like, it seems like polarity, but it's really all just the same thing manifesting in different ways. Um, I just don't agree that there are negative people. And maybe that's not what you meant. Uh, <laughs> or maybe there. Okay. <laughs> Wait, no, just let me wrap this one, right? <laughs> you can challenge again. <sighs> okay, so positive energies need to come in negotiation with negative energies. They have to come in negotiation. Negative energies aren't what people perception of what negative is. Negative has a greater reason behind negative which is far beyond what the average human can see. In the same sense that we can look at, let's say, a president making certain sacrifices which are short-term, and we say, how on earth could you make a decision like that? But it's because their thinking is way beyond that. So what we can see as what looks like a sacrifice is for also the greater cause. So actually, there's no way for positivity to act by itself because actually it's all one. This is all one. Everything is oneness. So this is negotiation. So whether we see the negative things that happen in life is not only governed by negative, because positive needs to have this conversation with negative to say, hey, let's agree on this. In a few years' time, we need this to happen. And why is that so? Very simple. We can see it. Let's make it more tangible here. Population is rising. Problem. Global problem, right? Natural resources are getting less. Big problem. So what, what are they doing? Well, positive energies are channeling ideas through people like Elon Musk and Richard Branson and all of us to say, hey, raise consciousness and try to get yourself out, of, out, out into space now. But then positive energies are having a meeting and saying, hey, guys, we got a problem here. So I know Elon and I know Richard Branson is working on this deal right now, but it's not happening yet. And if you see natural resources and if you see all the, pro all the, all the population rise, there's still a problem. So what do we need to do? We have no choice, but we need to negotiate with the negative guys over there, mm. right? Not negative, yeah. but they're helping us to keep existence happening because they negotiate then to say, hey guys, okay, we're going to have to do this. You guys, please help us deal with this population problem or this uh, financial mm. problem so that the game can still play until we found a solution for the next phase. Mm. And so that's how I see it. <laughs> You're really talking about a cleansing of sort then, really, that negotiation with the negative, right, because of the overpopulation. Wow. Wow. Marissa? So you said something about, you know, you can't change the world, but I think you can. I think changing the world is a big ask, but I think if you can change people, one heart and one soul at a time, that's how you change the world. For instance, if every kid went to school saying, I matter, I'm significant, I'm enough, there wouldn't be any bullying. Kids who bully don't feel good about themselves. If children could start learning how to praise themselves and accept praise and give it, they wouldn't be kids that bully, they wouldn't be trolls. I mean, that sounds like a, a, a long way away, but there are a lot of people already understanding that, that you can change the world by changing people. And there are some countries like New Zealand, for instance, who've got a spiritual prime minister, and that will have a ripple effect. Um, so, and, and yes, we do have countries that want to overtake other countries and eliminate people. And we have religions that don't like other people. But if, you know, I'm enough sounds such a cliche, but if everybody thought they were enough, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have a need to diminish anyone else. And Maybe there aren't enough resources, but we can make resources. We're already talking about growing meat in laboratories. We, we already, I mean, I was just in a country where, well, Holland is the same, where they, they actually grew the country. They reclaimed the land from the sea. So there's a lot of ways here we don't have enough land. We can actually make more land. We can make more food. There's so many things we can do. 
And I think you can change the world. You can change the world by changing people. You can change the world by having forward-thinking people. Like, I mean, who would have thought Bill Gates could wipe out malaria, mm -hmm. one man? But that's what he's going to do in 20 years' time. And by the way, if he wasn't rich, he couldn't do it. So when people say spiritual people shouldn't be rich, you can be rich if you're prepared to do good things with your richness. Mm -hmm. If you think of, if you want to attract wealth and you can think what you will do with your wealth that's good, then you can attract it because it's for the good of everyone. And, and there is enough money for everyone. It's just very unfairly distributed. But I think we could, I mean, so many people have got a genius mind. They, they could solve overpopulation. They could solve everything. I mean, look at Dubai. They built a whole island on the sea. Um, I think parts of Tokyo, parts of Japan have done that too. We, we can project space travel. We can do all kinds of things. So I believe that if humans could collectively get together and think of the good stuff they could do, then, you know, even the days of smart people went to school and got a degree. I mean, one of my friends, she provides, you know, wired down computers in Nigeria and kids come out of the villages and they, you can't steal this computer and they learn on it. And there are many kids now who've educated themselves coming out of India mm -hmm. and Africa who are doing amazing things. We just don't give people credit for how resourceful some of them. I mean, who would have thought, you know, my daughter's taking a driving test. Her daughter never will. The next generation, they will never need to drive because cars are driven by robots. We're taking cars off the streets. We're doing car share. And for all the bad in the world, there's some amazing things happening in the world. You know, sharing cars, not having to drive. I mean... I think we, I, I don't like to scare people with the bad. I like to excite them with the good, that the world could be an amazing place. I mean, even the fact that we no longer, you know, only 20 years ago, because when the white kids had lunch at one time, the black kids at another. I mean, I'm a parent of a mixed race child, and in England, every fourth child is mixed race. We now have mixed race people in the royal family. I think that's amazing. So that's changing in our lifetime too. Barack Obama was a great person to go, look, you can be anything. You're no longer defined by the color of your skin or the education you had or where you came from. Because it's not where you came from, it's where you're going. So I think we should look at all the good that's happening in the world. The fact that nowadays Beyonce is the most attractive, desirable woman in the world. And I think that's a great thing. I think when I went to Disneyland, I was like, I don't like this. All the superheroes are blonde and blue-eyed. And what's well, that say for a kid with brown skin and brown eyes? But even Disney has got in on it now. And we don't have white superheroes. Superman isn't any more blonde. And some really good things happening in the world. And I prefer to focus on those because I think it's amazing what's happening. I love that. I love the fact, I mean, I don't love Kim Kardashian per se, but I love the fact that she's got four mixed race children mm -hmm. and everyone's going to come. Then they look and they love her baby. They went, oh my God, that's the one. And she's not a white baby with blonde hair and blue eyes. And there's so many good things to look at. Love these kinds of conversations. You know, we talk about these topics and we've got these different perspectives, but at the same time, the same. Mm -hmm. In fact, write in the comments. What do you think? Who, you know, what, what's your take on this? Let's, I'm the best, right? Let's get you in the conversation <laughs> I'm and, joking. Uh, and see what you guys think. All right, let's switch it up a little bit. Let's talk about relationships in 2020. Mm. So how do we go about improving our relationships? Mm. Improve your relationship with yourself. <laughs> there you go. Well, let's start with Marissa. Okay. If you want to fall in love with anyone, you got to fall in love with yourself. People will love you to the degree that you love <laughs> yourself. Your ability to have a great relationship will go back to one thing, and it's not how big your breasts are or how big your wallet is or you know, how great your thighs are or not, or your six pack. The one thing that will make you lovable is your ability to accept that you're lovable. If you believe you're worthy of love, you'll find it. But if you try to run after love or chase love or earn love or even buy love, you're saying, not really worth it. So you've got to fall in love with yourself. It's a lifelong romance. No waxing is required, no hours in the salon or press-ups in the gym, when you fall in love with yourself and do it properly, because if I don't even know how to do that, we'll look in the mirror and go, 
you're an amazing person. I love you. Nobody knows. We all talk to ourselves all the time. So talk to yourself better because when you can really decide, I am a good person, I've got a good heart, of course I'm worthy of love. There's someone out there who will benefit from me loving them and them loving me. When you can really say that and believe it, you'll attract it. That is the law of attraction. If I'm worthy of love and love is worthy of me, and so I would really say if you want to find an amazing love, but it isn't just finding it, it's also keeping it. Look in the mirror every day and say, I love you, you're great, you're amazing. And then decide that what you want wants you and that what you are moving towards is moving towards you like a laser. And people do this list, I'm going to have a list of what I want in somebody. But then when you've done your list, stop and think, well, that person I want... What do they want? Because maybe you're looking for the wrong thing. So, you know, I, I see that with many guys who come in and say, I, I want a really hot girl of 20, but what have you got to offer her? Apart from a bank account. I mean, what are you going to talk about anyway? Don't you want someone you can share stuff with? So you have to be realistic about what you want. You know, you can write your shopping list of what you want in a guy or girl, but then you've got to look at and think, well, but what do they want? Mm. But if you believe you're lovable, you know, love is all around you. It, it's not difficult. My gran used to say, every pan has its lid. And she was absolutely right. There's a lid for every pan. And you can find your lid. Mm. You Brilliant. Believe you're worth it. You're worth it is the beginning, the end. Whatever you want to find in your life, the beginning, the middle, the end, is the knowledge that you're worth it. And no one can give that to you except for you. The only one who could, because everybody loved Marilyn Monroe, but Marilyn didn't love Marilyn. Mm. It went right. Away. Everyone loved Princess Diana, but Diana never felt she was worthy of love. So you can't make the world love you. You have to love you, and then you give the world permission to follow you, and it absolutely will fall in love with you, and you'll have an amazing life. And it's a romance that never tires, never do, never forgets your birthday. Never complains that you've got cellulite. It's, it's always there. Yes, indeed. Awesome. So, a um, couple things. Number one, forgive your parents. Number two, address your traumas. Number three, let go of the idea that you know your partner. Now, I'm going to go back through those. For the most part... Um, and, and maybe I'll just expand that list to forgive anybody who's ever harmed you. Forgive the person who broke up with you, who cheated on you. Forgive your dad for dying. Forgive your mom for dying. Whatever the thing is, just forgive. Practice forgiveness because all of those things you bring into your relationship. Address your traumas. Uh, I do workshops all over the world. Um, one of them is called The Bridge Experience and the other one is called Extreme Leadership. And we're now going on thousands of people who've done our workshops. And uh, there are some exercises we do in those workshops that uh, open up a space for people to uh, face some shame and some guilt head on. And I'm talking about Africa, Costa Rica, Australia, Canada, US, UK, everywhere we've done this workshop. 80% of those rooms, 80% of those rooms has had some type of sexual abuse either done to them, and then they did it to someone else. Um, and most of the time, and I'll now drop it to 50, 50% 50 of the 80% has had it happen multiple times. And one of the reasons why people get such huge breakthroughs and they walk out of our rooms transformed, not just changed, because change is completely different than transformed. They walk out transformed is because the body is a living library that has stored everything you have ever been through. And when you do not address and allow the nervous system to reset itself, you carry that like a backpack full of rocks into every relationship that you go into. Third thing, I say this all the time. The moment I think I know my wife, our relationship is over. It is dead at that moment because there's no space for her to grow. There's no space for her to be unfolding like a lotus flower. And so... Uh, I want to challenge each and every one of you, 
with your family, your friends, with everybody, including yourself. We don't know what's in the ocean, let alone who somebody is. We make up a bunch of stories and we want to define. The, the, the brain tries to, to box people in. And the moment you think you know them, the relationship no longer exists. So let go of the ideas of who you think they are and meet them anew every single day. Now, do, do, do I do that A++ every single day? Nope. Do I attempt it? Yes. And for me, that's one of the reasons why I have a thriving relationship and I love my dream girl. Alexi, if you're watching this, I love you, girl. <laughs> Daddy's coming home. <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> I read this and I thought, so it was, if you don't heal your wounds, you bleed over people that never cut you. And I thought, that's mm. an amazing thing. I didn't yes. say that, by the way. I'm not taking someone else to say, but yes. if, if you don't heal your wounds, you bleed over people that never cut you. That's the essence of what yeah, I just said. Yeah, you got to yes. and, and of course, in nature, wounds heal, mm -hmm. unless you keep picking them apart. Yes. But I, I'm a great believer with you. You can't heal what you can't feel, and you certainly can't heal what you don't understand. Yes. But the body is a healing machine. Mm -hmm. If you let it, and if you hold on to stuff, mm -hmm. it doesn't heal. And I love my husband, too. He is amazing. He's pretty and, awesome. Yeah, he sure. is. You know, and, and everyone can find someone awesome, believe you're awesome. Find someone who's awesome because love is all around you. It's like that song from The Lion King and wet, wet, wet. Love is all around you, but you've got to let it in. Mm. And you let it in by knowing you're worth it. And everyone is worth love. There isn't anyone mm -hmm. who isn't worth it. That's awesome. <laughs> Annie. I am not married, <laughs> but I'm going to keep this quick and simple because I feel like you guys covered a lot of the things that I you know, believe about this subject. You keep stealing your Yes. <laughs> what, like, this isn't fair. Just kidding. Um, no, but definitely, first and foremost, self-love is so important. I feel like people, they are in search of like their missing piece, but you're already whole. You already are worthy. You don't need someone mm. to complete you. And you're going to attract that person who's meant for you once you realize mm. that. I know like friends in the past, and I probably did this when I was younger, you know, they're trying to search for this perfect person when they're not being that for themselves. Mm. They want someone who's fit and is wealthy and they're doing all these things, but they're not turning inward and being that first and foremost. Like you want to, you want a wealthy man? Like you like develop the wealth consciousness in yourself. You want a fit guy? Like you take care of your body. You be what you want. And that is what's going to attract the person that is meant for you, the perfect person who is meant for you is going to be attracted to you once you find the wholeness and love in yourself. That's all I have to say. And don't look for your other half because you're not a half, you're a whole. Exactly. <laughs> the spiritual master. I think these guys have said a lot. Um, I think maybe just a final thing to maybe touch on is um, in communication with what Marissa talks about, communication with self, understanding self, and then communication with partner. Honesty is a big, big aspect because we need to be honest with ourselves what we want. We also need to be honest with the other person um, in terms of how we communicate. And I think a lot of people fear because fear being honest because I might hurt the other person if I was honest, but understanding that you don't hurt other people, other people who are hurt they get hurt they feel hurt you know for that for that and they it needs to come out for them to be able to see it to be able to heal it and so i think that the only thing we can do is just play this game where we are in alignment with purity honesty and say everything how it is if we feel something we can we can speak about about that and understand each other so uh, more effective communication i think so what are you guys most excited about right now and you are starting with this one. Oh. that's right we're hey. going to annie first so, <laughs> so annie what are you most excited about this year and what can we look forward to on your content your channel okay i have a lot of things that i'm excited for because i feel like as the past years have been this year is going to be of extreme growth for myself i am starting my one-to-one -one coaching and I help women overcome limiting beliefs and anxiety in order to manifest their dream life. So <laughs> I'm, I'm actually taking clients right now. So I'm excited for that. I plan to do 
more speaking gigs because I did one last year and I loved it. And I'm ready to like just break out of, you know, that cage, that comfort zone, like face the fear, do all the things. Um, I plan to manifest yet another dream apartment. Um, going up again and um you know just continual growth it was his house, though. oh yeah i'm moving <laughs> he's living in the house that that is mine he's in my house i don't know why you're in my house like what the heck <laughs> but yeah there's just a lot to come i'm excited gonna hit a million not that numbers matter but you know i'm Get going it. to yes they matter yeah okay <laughs> that's that's amazing <laughs> and you're gonna accomplish that i can tell i am and that is another thing that i fully know if i set the intention for it it's mine. Mm. Mm. Amen. Yes. All right. I think we're excited about um, our new programs because we've been doing speaking, coaching. We've been running three-day events, five-day transformation events, things like that for like nine years now. And so <laughs> the back-to-back -back speaking gigs, I know you've been through the whole thing, is, is, is not just... Um, it's nonstop, it's, it's, it's tackling. But at the same time, in three days, in five days, a lot of people, what we found, will always come and they'll always say, oh my God, this changed my life. So you have, let's say, 300 people in a room. But in reality, how many of them become the next millionaire or how many of them actually get that action? And I think that's why I love what Marissa does is because it starts with the mindset. So while we're teaching strategies, they're missing that the 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 accountability the they, they say oh wow this tool is so good i'm gonna rank on youtube with this tool but then what happens is tomorrow they're facing oh, how am i gonna put this video out there what are people gonna think of me so so then they never do it but yet the strategies were were effective so instead now we're changing the whole model where it's a three three month so people come for three whole months. So in March, April, May, we've got 200 people flying from all around the world coming to the UK. They're going to be training with us from 5 a.m. in the morning till 9 p.m. at night. And that is spiritual training, yoga, meditation in the morning to internet marketing, mindset, and sales strategies through the daytime. It's a total like people don't get those two sides of it, you know, wealth and spirituality. But that's going to be for the duration of three months. For what reason? Because I want them to wake up with me every single morning to understand what it really takes. Not just, oh, hey, I use this ninja trick and then, hey, you look, I've got a, th a million subscribers on YouTube. But actually, it's because sometimes when you don't feel like doing it, you can still get your ass moving because you understand the why behind what you're doing, you know? So for us, with what we're doing, we're super excited with this whole um, new Wealth Yogi program. And um, yeah, to just like everybody else on this panel, change more lives and help more people find their greatness and create more leaders. This is a year to level up to. It sounds three month program mm -hmm. uh, that intense. You're certainly going to uh, have some new habits coming out of there. And They've got no escape. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're stuck no with us for the three months. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I think I think one last thing I just want to finish off on is I really, I really, really like this quote where they say, if serving is below you, then leadership is beyond you. And I really, really like that is because I believe that us as leaders here, it's not about creating how many followers, how many subscribers. It's about how can we find the leadership, bring the leadership, bring the greatness out of other people. Because at the end of the day, we as individuals, we can only do so much. I'm not saying we can't change the world. We can change. But if we develop other leaders to find their power collaboratively and we are able to collaborate, like I love this collaboration because I think people should come together and not say, hey, oh, but my channel is bigger than your channel or whatever, whatever. It's like, hey, you're spreading positivity. I spread positivity. If I get all my subscribers to subscribe to you and you go your channel, that's great actually because when you win, I don't lose. Everybody's growing together. And I think we need more conscious leaders coming together now to actually be open with that and say, actually, that's right. Let's just all do it together because if we can, that is when we're going to change the world because everyone does it together. That's oneness, right? In the spirit of abundance. That's right. That's the way we should be operating. That's right. Yes. Preston. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, I'm excited to meet uh, the twins 
that are on the way that uh, my wife is pregnant with right now and just see what that feels like. Just step into the chaos of uh, having a two-year-old and twins and um, the role of of father is has been one of the most transformative and most beautiful things that I've ever been gifted. And I love it. Um, second, um, I have a company called Kaboom Coaching, which is a 10-week online step-by-step -step blueprint for how to create more confidence, clarity, and cash flow in your coaching business. And uh, we are getting so many people to actually have clients and money, and it gets me so excited. I am very much like you. I know there's enough. And uh, what hit me last year was I created this huge you know, coaching program and did all these things and scaled and all these things. And I would look at these coaches and be like, oh, they're doing all the wrong things. Like just, and, and, and I was seeing marketers market to these coaches and sort of feed on them. And there was a part of me that was like, oh, that's so stupid. And it hit me one day because I say this all the time, your complaint is your mission. And I was like, I'm complaining about these marketers teaching these coaches stupid stuff that doesn't work. So that's my new mission. And it was like, it just clicked. And that for me has been amazing. Having people come in with all this like medicine on their heart and really truly want to serve and transform people, but not understanding how to actually sell that and, and, and create and hunt clients. And so I've helped and, and that's just exciting to me. We're going to take that business and, um, blow it up. Uh, my, and you heard it first, my mission, my goal is to go to the top, number one in that space. And for those of you who you know who you are, there's like seven businesses out there that are doing this at a high level. I'm taking you all out <laughs> with the best intentions. <laughs> it's happening. You heard it. <laughs> yes. Marissa. So what am I excited about for 2020? Is that the yeah, question? or what are you excited about now? Your 2020, present day? So we only started RTT, training people in rapid transformational therapy, really only um, five years ago. We created a brand new therapy that's really set the world on fire. And now we've created the therapeutic coach. So after rapid transformational therapy, we're now doing rapid transformational coaching. And rather like you too, we, we don't teach you just to be a phenomenal therapist. We teach you marketing because it doesn't matter how good you are if nobody knows where you are so we teach people marketing we build their own website for them we get clients for them and i believe that being a therapist is the best job in the entire world i wouldn't even be beyonce because when you're a therapist you don't change other people's lives you change your own mm -hmm. and you wake up and you think i love my life i wake up and i love my life because the people that we train, they have meaning, they have purpose, they have connection, they have things, they make a difference. You don't wake up and think, why am I here? You think, I'm here to make a difference, to touch people's soul, to stop someone killing themselves, to stop someone being bullied, to help someone find love or wealth or health or joy. And it really is the best job in the world. And I, when I was a therapist, I, I got voted the best therapist in Britain. That was kind of cool. But um, I never even realized that I could actually teach other people to be the best therapist. And a lot of our therapists are on the paper, in the news, they've got their own stuff going on. And so 2020 for us is about now teaching coaches the way we taught therapists and teaching people marketing and teaching people that if you make a difference in someone else's life, then your, your life will always have meaning and purpose. If someone in the world is going to bed and getting up, having a better life because of you, you have huge meaning, massive purpose, and massive significance. And it's not even about the money because that's a priceless thing. But it's very nice that you can make a lot of money doing that too. Um, it's just I just can't imagine a, a job better than being a great therapist and coach and speaker. And for me, I, I mean, I'm never going to retire. Why would I retire from what I love? I do what I love. I love what I do. But I make other people do what they love and love what they do. So 2020 is just about doing what I've already done, sending. We've already trained 4,000 therapists 
who every year and I go, my God, this is amazing. I used to get letters from my clients going, you know, you changed my life. Now I get letters from the people I train to be there saying, you changed my life. Look at the letter, the flowers, the card. And it's just, just a lovely thing that with all the negativity in the world, we're helping people fall in love with their life, fall in love with themselves and realize that actually life is amazing and life is wonderful and there's so much good in it. But of course, like you were saying, whatever you focus on, you get more of. If you focus on pain, on your headache, it hurts more. And if you're busy, you forget about it. So whatever you focus on, you get more of. So I like to focus on the good in life, the possible in life, the amazing, beautiful world we're in. And I believe we'll get more of it. Yeah. Bless you. You're doing such great things in the world. Thank you, Marissa. I know. We got we won 13 awards last year. We even wow. won an award, which is amazing, for the best pharmaceutical product. And it's like we don't have one. They went, no, but you're helping people with depression and suicidal thoughts. We won an award for the best pharmaceutical product, which is our RTT for fixing depression and suicidal thoughts. So yeah. that was cool. Wonderful. All right, well, you know, guys, I'd love to talk to you guys all night. This is this is great. We've got to do this again. Let us know if you want us to do this again and what you want us to talk about because um, this could be a regular thing. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's just amazing to get to get minds like this together. Before we go, some uh, we'll start with you, Marissa. Some parting words and let us know where to connect with you and find out more about your 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 programs. So my parting word is, of course, you're enough. The the denominator of so many issues in the world come from this lie I'm not enough I'm not enough is beyond addictions and fears and phobias and limiting thoughts tell yourself you're enough every day go to marissapeer.com we have a ton of products to give you love blocks wealth blocks health blocks we give them all away and we're happy to give stuff away so marissapeer.com I'm enough.com and if you want to do what I do go to rapid transformationaltherapy.com or just go and, and take a ton of products and fall in love with yourself. There's really nothing better, apart from having great kids. That's kind of pretty close. But fall in love with you because it never, ever, ever goes away. And it's amazing. Thank you, Marissa. Parting words. Um, I love you. I appreciate you. And if nobody um, has told you today or even this year, uh, you're amazing. And uh, we're proud of you, all of us. It's not always so easy to be human and doing this human thing. And um, you really get to hang your hat on. You keep getting back up. If you found your way to a video like this, that means something about you. It means there's an aspect of you that is calling for the revealing of your power at its highest heights. And you have medicine on your heart that only you can give. And so this is also me calling you forward and reminding you that it's also your duty as a human to help evolve the species, to raise the bar for what it means to be human. Continue to play, live in joy, live in love. And um, if you are looking for inspiration, uh, find me on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook, Preston Smiles, PrestonSmiles.com. If you're a coach, go to KaboomCoaching.com and sign up to jump on a call with me or one of my team and we can help you so you can help others. Blessings and blessings. From my heart to yours, like legit, thank you. <laughs> All right, Preston. That's awesome. My words for you would be that everything is happening for you in perfect timing. I live by this. Whatever's going on, it's okay. It's going to lead you exactly where you need to be. Um, so anytime anything pops up, either if it's perceived as a positive or a negative, embrace it and accept it, and it's all happening for you in perfect timing. Just remember that. Live by it. Everything's good. Um, you can find me on YouTube or Instagram or at my website at oh my Annie. That's with two H's. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you over there. Thank you. 
Final words? I think they said it all. <laughs> practice, practice love, practice positivity, practice giving, practice kindness. I don't think there's, um, you can't go wrong with that. And one thing is that a lot of people, they always like what these guys have been saying is looking outwards for things. But actually, once we start looking inwards and be the best version of ourselves, we, because we don't attract what we want, we attract what we are. So in that sense, every single day, we should just be able to look in the mirror and appreciate who we are for who we are, have gratitude for who we are. And like what Marissa says, I am enough. But at the same time, understand that it's not saying I am enough, then my life is finished. It's saying I am enough, yet at the same time, I'm going to become better every single day. And so keep working on that. Keep practicing that. And yeah, just love and blessings to all. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Four brilliant minds come together to help you guys uh, create a happy, healthy, rich year. Um, thank you all. Thank you all. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channels. Connect with us on social media. And uh, yeah, until next time. Be kind to yourself and to every life you touch. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.